This occurred in July 2008. I had not had any contact with the paternal side of my family since 1996, 12 years earlier, including my father, David Diefenderfer, and my half-sister, Juliet. After my divorce from my first wife in 2003, I had begun drinking heavily and found I could not stop drinking no matter how hard I tried. I had gone from owning a house and being president of two NASDAQ companies and making over 10000 a month, getting a 240000 Christmas bonus in stock in 2000, to getting multiple DUIs, being in and out of jail, sleeping in park bushes, and detoxing in hospitals. I had been a militant atheist since deciding the Mormon church was false as a teenager and applying my disillusionment to all religion. I was also really into physics and I would give long-winded logical speeches on why the possibility of a creator was non-existent. I had reached a point of helplessness and desperation after missing the opportunity to spend the summer of 2008 with my son, Bradley which I had thrown away by calling my ex-wife completely drunk after an encouraging few months of sobriety. I went to the hospital after suffering delirium tremens and muscle convulsions, and I promised myself I would do the AA program to the best of my ability when I got out. I embraced AA wholeheartedly afterward, and at a meeting where a gentleman named Darren Phillips spoke about being an atheist, selling his company for millions to AIG, then becoming a broken, homeless, suicidal drunk, I asked him to sponsor me. He asked me if I was willing to go to any length to recover. He asked me if I would release my own control over my life and let God control it, and if I would let God guide me through him until I had my own conscious contact. I said yes and meant it. One of the first things he had me do was start praying. He said it would work if I suspended my disbelief. He said I had to at least be open-minded. I knew he had been an atheist, and I saw he believed now, and that I wanted what he had. And so I believed that he knew more than me about this, and I suspended my disbelief. I prayed to his God since I didn't have one. I began my prayers, Dear Darren's God. I moved into a halfway house with others, called New House Three, who were struggling with addiction. I went to AA meetings multiple times per day in Santa Barbara. Times I wanted to drink really bad, I would call Darren, and he would instruct me to go do something for someone else. He suggested doing someone's chore around the dorms, who was still at work. I did what he said, since I believed what he was telling me was God's will. After a while, I stopped calling him because I knew what he would say. I just went straight to doing other people's chores. Others noticed the change in me first. They said I was different in a good way. The manager told me in all his years of running a halfway house he had never seen such a dramatic change in an individual in any period of time, let alone a few weeks. People who I didn't like when I first got there or found irritating beforehand suddenly were genuinely likable now, as though they had changed, but they hadn't. I began to receive great peace while praying, and I felt that the sunlight of the Spirit, as Darren called it, was coming directly to me now. I went through the steps of AA and got to step nine in early July of 2008. Step nine is making amends to everyone you owe money to and owe an apology to. My father and sister were near the top of my list. Darren had told me to do the big ones first. I had cut off contact 12 years earlier with both of them, and the last time I saw my dad, I beat him up and put him in the hospital. I went to jail for that. My sister I had cut off with no explanation. The explanation really was that I knew she would try to get me to patch things up with Dad, and I didn't want to. I was done. She was acceptable collateral damage, I had decided at the time. She had been a sweetheart to me all the time I'd known her. I attempted to locate Juliet and my dad to make amends. I searched for them on the internet, and I even used a company called ussearch.com to locate them. I was able to find some past phone numbers that no longer worked and past business name registrations in South Dakota for my dad, but nothing on my sister. I was also able to find out that they were both alive based on social security death records, but that was it. My grandmother on that side I found out was dead, and I wasn't able to locate any other relatives on that side. I'd never really known anyone else on my dad's side. 
Um, I didn't know my father until I was 16, or Juliet until my 20s. I called Darren and explained the situation to him. I asked him if he wanted me to write a letter to them and burn it, or something like that. His response was amazing. He's British, I'll, I'll try to do his accent. So you've used all your human power to find them and fail, correct? Yes. Okay, and you've enlisted other humans, including this U.S. search service, and they have failed as well, correct? Yes. When human power fails us, David, what do we do? When your human power failed to stop your drinking, what did you do? Came to you like I am now. Because you needed God. My only job was to help you see that we don't run the show. God does. In your third step, you turned your will and your power over to the care of God as you understand Him. Not you, not me, not anyone else. So now that you failed and other humans failed to find your dad and sister, why are you asking me for an alternative solution? Shouldn't you be asking someone else? And I knew he meant God. He wanted me to pray to God to find my dad and sister. And although I had seen the change in me brought about by doing what I knew was God's will, and although I had felt the sunlight of the Spirit in prayer, if I was honest with myself, I still doubted, lingering doubts. Prayer was self-hypnosis, I would think to myself. You put yourself in a trance and plant suggestions. That's why when I prayed to be relieved from a desire for alcohol, it worked. This was my secret justification that allowed me to maintain my atheistic doubts deep down. Darren wanted me to ask God to find my sister and dad. That's not something that self-hypnosis could pull off. And that's why I hadn't thought of it myself. But I had promised Darren I would follow his direction and treat it as God's direction, since he was the one with the long-term connection, not me. And so I did. I thought, who are you to say there's no God? This very well could be a God, and maybe you just don't understand the big picture. Maybe you are like a cat who wonders why humans stare at a TV instead of chasing mice. Maybe you don't know anything but your own small world. I prayed in earnest every morning. I prayed that God help me find my dad and sister, not for me, but for them, so they could hear my amends and have peace over how I must have hurt them. I also prayed for God to show me he wasn't a hypnosis trick. If you walked on water, I said, then whoever saw it didn't have to have faith anymore. Peter denied you three times after that. I won't. I know how that sounds, but that's what I added to the request for help finding my dad and sister. I prayed for three specific things every morning. Dear God, please help me find my dad so I can bring him peace with my amends. Please help me find my sister so I can bring her peace with my amends. Please show me this frustra- please show me and this frustratingly logical mind that you gave me a miracle so I can cast away these lingering doubts and become a more useful servant to you. That's what I pray. Every morning for over two weeks. God helps those who help themselves, I know. And just because I had turned the situation over to God, I didn't stop looking. I would type my dad's name into Google with different keywords after it and see if anything came up. And a little over two weeks after I had begun adding my dad, adding finding my dad to my morning prayers, Something came up that hadn't before under a search term that I'd used before. Something new. Time Magazine. Time Magazine had posted an article that was due to be published on July 28th in the print edition on their website on July 17th. My Google search had uncovered this new link. I clicked on it and my whole perspective of the world changed from my dad was in it. My sister Julia was in it. And it said where my sister worked. It also said my dad was dying of stage 4 lung cancer, inoperable. The next day I was on the phone with Microsoft asking to speak to Juliet. The receptionist connected me with my sister's voicemail. I left a message and she called me back crying. She gave me my dad's number and I called him. He was still living in South Dakota and I was in Santa Barbara, California. He made arrangements to fly out the very next week. As fate and God would have it, my dad, even though he lived over a thousand miles away, had a sailboat docked in a slip at a marina a half hour from where I lived. 
He shared this slip rent with an attorney friend of his. And he would fly out a few times each year and use the sailboat. It was in Channel Islands Harbor in Port Wainimi, next to Ventura, a short drive from Santa Barbara. He looked the same, but with white hair. His first words as I met him on the dock by his boat was, Son, you punch like a mule kicks. I began my amends as he navigated the marina using the outboard motor. Then he asked for help with the jig as we unfurled the sails at the breakwater. Just as we were heading into the open sea, I finished my amends and we hugged. As we were hugging, the sun broke through the gray marine layer, which had made it overcast all morning, beaming warm sunlight into the two of us. And I knew it was the sunlight of the spirit, and that the warmness was God's love showering down on us, and it radiated through my whole body. I knew what Darren knew then, and felt what he felt, and I wanted, like he did, to show others this amazing thing that was right there in front of us all along. My dad died in June 2011. If it hadn't been for my alcoholism getting the better of me, I would have never found Darren. I would have never found God. My dad would have died never having reconnected with his son, and I would have justified it somehow. That's why today I'm a grateful alcoholic. The Time Magazine print copy came out a few days later after I read the online article. Here it is. I had asked for three things in my prayer. God, please help me find my dad, my sister, and a miracle. A couple of weeks later, my dad, my sister, a miracle. Faith in action. On top of the page with my dad and sister in it. In bold. Faith in action. A miracle so profound, even my logical mind can't convince me it's just one big, amazing coincidence. Because I know better.